Thank you. And so, so my name is uh, John uh, Holtzclaw. I work for the, the National Cooperative Bank here in um, the United States. Um, we are uh, congressionally chartered in 1978, privatized in 81. Um, I've been with the bank for uh, 19 years. My job essentially is in strategic initiatives, which involves community development finance, cooperative expansion. Um, I also head up our diversity, equity, and inclusion program. And then outreach to foundations, and I was a... Um, uh, a lobbyist for 20 years, so please don't uh, judge me. Uh, before I came over to the business development side, uh, and, and I'm the board chair of a national organization called uh, that represents what we call community development financial institutions. I don't think you all have those in the UK, but they're basically alternatives to banks that do work in low and moderate income communities. And the bulk of my work is in low and moderate income communities as, as well. Next slide, please. So, you know, NCB basically was created to, to serve an underserved niche in this country, cooperatives. Um, um, I had the pleasure of speaking to the Cooperatives UK folks at their cooperative study conference not too long ago. And there may be folks um, in this uh, conference or meeting that attended there as well. I know you, you'll be hearing from, or maybe Rory's here as well, work with him on that. So we, we, we provide financial services to cooperatives, but the other part about the bank that's so incredible, I feel, is that we have this further charter this mandate where we must uh, make best efforts that 30% of all of our disbursements be in low and moderate income communities. And so I think that's what makes us very unique because of that work that we do in low and moderate income communities. Next slide, please. Our common areas um, are obviously we do um, uh, cooperatives, we do um, cooperative grocery stores, health centers, we do a lot of work with um, uh, uh, na uh, native corporations, um, as a part of that mission lending piece that I talked to you about uh, in 2019, uh, we committed more than $352 million um, to serving uh, uh, um, low income communities uh, across the country uh, around that and cooperative development. And I uh, promise you that's not me in that grocery store right there, but uh, a nice picture that I found <laughs> on our website uh, uh, yesterday. Next slide, please. And so, I really enjoyed reading over um, the Quaker principles preparing for this uh, and, and just wanted to put up briefly some of the cooperative principles. Uh, my favorite one of all is concern for community because I feel like uh, there's no time like now uh, more than anything else uh, where there needs to be more concern for community and, and, and definitely the, the democratic member control one uh, one member, one vote, which is definitely getting uh, its test here in the United States right now as it relates to the presidential uh, campaign. Next slide, please. So just to really quickly, um, more than 12% of uh, uh, the three million cooperatives in the world, there uh, are, uh, they employ more than 280 million people around the globe, 10% of the world's employed population. Next slide. And then from a U.S. standpoint, one in three Americans are members of co-ops. We have a lot of credit unions here. Um, there are, um, they generate more than 2 million jobs each year. Um, they, um, the 92 million people uh, turn to uh, 7,500 credit unions. Although I work for a bank, I am a member of a credit union also. Uh, a lot of credit unions and rural electrics as well as farming. Uh, next slide. Uh, every year, uh, NCB produces uh, nation's uh, top 100 revenue earning cooperatives. I uh, definitely um, would, uh, if you want to learn more, there are a lot of uh, cooperatives like Ace Hardware here, and REI, uh, out, uh, Outdoor Store, as well as um, Ocean Spray Cranberry and Dunkin' Donuts are all purchasing co-ops. And a lot of people don't know that. So I definitely encourage everyone to go to ncb.coop to find out more about the co-op 100. Next slide, please. Just want to show you all just a couple, um, Navy Federal, REI, ACE. Next slide. Okay, so that, now that we've got past all the bank <laughs> stuff, uh, really wanted to just kind of uh, use this cartoon to illustrate uh, basically uh, the climate in uh, the, the U.S. right now. Uh, don't know how it is in the U.K., but this is just basically um, sums it up for me where you've got uh, one, one, one set of folks on one side and another set on the other side, both blaming each other. Um, and I think it's causing um, in a lot of ways, 
a lot of the, the division that you see here um, in this country um, and hopefully not around the world, but definitely what you see in this country. So I think that that cartoon basically captures the best of it with, with, with each one of them um, pointing a finger at each other, basically uh, blaming each other. And it's only going to get going to get worse uh, next January. Next slide. And so what this has led to is a lot of this civil unrest that you've seen in the U US that you that you that you uh, probably have seen on the, the news there um, uh, and, and it would, will probably continue even now uh, after the election has been settled but it all comes from inequalities or disparities amongst the people um, so it's, next slide please so for example you know there's a wealth there's a, a wealth gap in this country um, there are uh, there's an income gap in this country. The unemployment rate is higher uh, in this country for black and brown people. Um, uh, a larger share of, of the black population here lives in, in poverty and lack health insurance. Um, it, it's amazing that while COVID has impacted the entire world here in the United States, it's really impacted the black community uh, even harder. Um, um, just for so many reasons uh, and the lack of adequate health care being, and being, being one of them. Uh, my wife um, sadly lost her uncle um, a couple months ago in New Jersey uh, during one of the outbreaks. Um, and I think a lot of people in this country are preparing for um, um, another spike here going into the winter months. But, 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 but what happens is with these divisions, um, they never close. Um, you know, I always tell people this interesting fact about the U.S. that black males make up 6.5 percent of the entire country but we make up 43.5% of the prison population. And that's just an incredible, uh, staggering number. When you look at 2.3 million prisoners in this country and, we, and, and black males only make up 6.5% of the population, but we make up 43.5% of the, of, the, of, the, 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 of the prison population. Um, and, and I think about that number sometime and, and then I say to myself, well, should, should, I, should I even be afraid to, should I be afraid to leave my house um, every day? All said, um, these inequalities will continue to grow. And what I try to express to the cooperators at the Cooperative, Cooperative UK um, co conference was that, you know, I think as a whole, it's it's time for cooperators. I think it's time for all people to to the best of their abilities um, stand up for what's right and 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 want to be heard. I think you see that a lot here in this country with peaceful protests. I know that some have happened in the UK and around the world, but I think it's. Um, the divisions are not going to get better, and I think that it's important for all of us to, to do what we can to, to try to close those gaps. Uh, next slide, please. This is a story that I, I really love uh, to tell because I feel like sometimes we think to ourselves, well, why me, or what can I do, or, or you know, how can I contribute? So um, I always like to tell this story about what can a NASA custodian um, uh, or environmental technician or janitor or whoever you want to call them can teach us. Next slide, please. So in 1962, President Kennedy on the very start of the space exploration visited Marshall Space Center in Alabama and he was walking and noticed that there was a, a custodian um, janitor mopping the floor, sweeping the floor. And so he said uh, to the custodian, he says, hey, you know, I'm Jack Kennedy. Um, what do you do here? Next slide. And so with the president of the United States standing before him, the custodian replied, oh, Mr. President, I'm helping put a man on the moon. You know, he didn't say I'm sweeping the floor. He didn't say I'm cleaning up. He said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Um, next slide. So to most people, what, what he was doing was just cleaning the building. You know, I mean, um, in, in our office building in a pre-pandemic world, we see these folks all the time. And some of your offices, you may see them as, as well. But the point that I'm trying to get across is, is that no matter how large or small your role is in your organization, um, um, in your life, in your institutions, um, that you are a, a, a part of a larger story that's unfolding in your life, in your business, in your organization. And so, so we can all do our part by, in our own minds, working to put a man on the moon or trying to impact all the, the things that are happening in society. Next slide. Um, Tragically, uh, and I want to leave you all with a quote, um, um, John Lewis, who was a longtime congressman and civil rights icon, uh, passed away a little earlier this year. Um, you know, definitely a, a huge loss to the country, a huge loss to the 
to the world. But one of the things that he was really known for saying, and I love this saying, I have a t-shirt that has it on it. Um, he, 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 he implored people to not get lost in the sea of despair, to be hopeful, to be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. And uh, never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. So I think it's important that we all as humans um, um, do our best to get into good trouble. And, uh, and from that good trouble, hopefully, There'll be a, a sea of change. Um, I you know, obviously can't speak for the UK, but um, there, need, there needs to be a lot of good trouble made in the United States of America because um, uh, we definitely need to need to have a sea of change in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, just a simple message to everyone today. Um, did not want to keep everybody long. Next slide. I think that may be the last one. Did not want to keep everybody long. That's my contact information um, as well as social media stuff if anybody wants to contact me or follow up any questions at all. Um, I did see some questions in the chat and, and I, I didn't know if you wanted to end that and, 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 we, and we could, we could uh, I could come back later on this afternoon. It was somebody had asked a question about health initiatives. I wanna make sure I answer that question. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we do is we, we finance community health centers. Um, that's one of the, the things that I get uh, the joy of working on uh, because a majority of the health centers that we finance are in low and moderate income communities. So essentially uh, with lack of health care and no hospitals nearby, these health centers literally become the hub of the community, you know, because it's the only place that someone who's non-insured can actually go um, to get adequate health care. Number one, we also do a lot of um, grocery stores uh, and food deserts here in the United States where people sometimes have to travel miles to go to grocery stores. Um, I live in um, Chapel 